of the LHC. This is one of the access points around the LHC machine, but most importantly, this is one of the points from which the machine is cooled down. This cloud from which I'm coming out is harmless vapor, which is due to the cooling down of the helium contained in the LHC pipelines. Today we are reaching an important milestone in the process of startup of the LHC because we are cooling down the last sector of the machine. And I'm going to reach very soon Serge Claudet, head of the cryogenics operation, to take a look at all the stages required for this important operation. Hi Serge, just coming out of this cloud. I hope it's really harmless. It is, it is, don't worry. This is just a cloud of vapor. In fact, it is the humidity of air which is just condensed by the cold nitrogen gas that is released from the system. You said nitrogen. Is this is the same nitrogen we breathe in the air? Exactly. In the air, we have 21% of oxygen and 78% of nitrogen. Okay. So we just send it back to nature. So this lorry brings liquid nitrogen to some, and this liquid nitrogen is transferred into this local storage. And from this local storage, we bring it against helium to cool down the LHC. And where is the helium? Helium is in, uh, stored in tanks behind the building and is circulated with a screw compressor that we'll see on different pictures. And uh, only helium can be circulated down in the tunnel for obvious safety reasons. Nitrogen just stays in surface. But why do you need a combination of helium and liquid nitrogen? Good question. It's very commonly used in cryogenics that for cooling down to 80 Kelvin, so minus 200 more or less, is much more powerful with uh, bringing liquid uh, nitrogen to pre-cool the helium compared to the normal machines we use in uh, helium refrigeration. Okay, but 80K is not enough for the LHC. You need to go to the next stage. Yes. And let's take a look at what that consists of. Okay, let's, let's go. go. So the second ingredient we need uh, is helium. And I guess you need an awful lot from the size of this tank? We need about 130 tons of helium to cool down the entire LHC. But uh, helium is circulated in a closed circuit in the cryogenic process. However, to liquefy it, we need to store it in the gaseous form for the time being uh, to be ready for liquefaction. And that's what we do in these big tanks. Okay, so the tanks contain gaseous helium. Helium at ambient temperature. At ambient temperature, how much of it can you keep in there? Well, in fact, in this vessel of 250 cubic meters, we store 800 kilos of helium at maximum 20 bar. So it's just a buffer? It's just a buffer. And then the rest is in the circuits? In the circuits, starting with the compressors. the itinerary of helium that from this big tank through the compressor gets to this other mega installation. Where are we now and what is this installation for? What does it do? Okay, this installation is in fact one of the eight helium liquefier we have around the LHC. So we have one per sector and the objective of this machine is to take helium at uh, ambient temperature and liquefy it at uh, a bit higher than four degrees from absolute zero. So it is minus 269 degrees. So still following the tracks of the helium, we are now, as you can see from the equipment, 100 meters below ground in the LHC area, underground area. And uh, we've reached uh, already a temperature of 4K for the helium upstairs in the liquefier. And here something else is happening. It's going to be cooled even more down. Yes, because LHC requires helium at 1.9 Kelvin. Okay. So the only way to do so is to pump on the helium to uh, decrease its boiling temperature. And this is done in here? And that's what is done in here with special machinery called cold compressors. And these cold compressors have to pump at 15 millibar on helium in order to reduce its boiling temperature and get superfluid helium. And that's the helium the LHC requires? Yes. 
So let's go now closer to the LHC. Which is the last part with the piping to bring the helium to the magnet. Okay. And we are actually one level below the LHC itself. Yes, and this line is a vacuum insulated pipeline which carries five pipes to bring the helium at the various pressure and temperature to the LHC magnet. Is there a lot of helium in here in these pipes? Not exactly. The majority of helium is inside the magnets themselves and this pipeline just carries what is required to keep it cold. Okay, so you've now filled most of the machines? Yes, the first part of the job is done. All LHC is cold at nominal temperature and now we just have to maintain it at its nominal temperature for beams. And is that a difficult job to do? We'll see, but uh, we'll have some hard time to maintain it every day for one year of operation. Let's follow the pipe and take a look where it, where it ends up. We're now back on the surface in the CCC, the CERN Control Center, where the LHC cooling is controlled and operated. As you can see from the screens above, the whole ring is now cold. Serge, this is really a huge milestone for your team. Can you summarize how many people, how many months and how much material this operation has involved? First, as you can imagine, it's not a simple thing to cool down this 27 kilometers of machine close to absolute zero. So fortunately, we could profit from the uh, two years of uh, experience we had so far. We consolidated the uh, automatism and the entire team has gained in experience. So this team is about 60 people with operation, mechanics, instrumentation controls, both from CERN and uh, support. And it took us about three months to cool down this machine in 2009 with about 6,000 tons of liquid nitrogen. And we have now 130 tons of liquid helium at CERN. So now that you fill the LHC with liquid helium at 1.9 Kelvin, is your mission over? Not exactly, because now we have to work hard to keep it cool.